two engineers, one choice, and that choice is to fight back. Ben Laskowski, George Hadley, in the blockbuster movie event of your weekend, Study Break, Episode 4. This time, it's for real. I sure do love working on math homework with you. Wait, what's happening? It feels so dark. Blue water, green. Ah, calculator, speak to me. Blue simple structure, slide rules are actually capable of a wide number of mathematical computations. Using a slide rule, a user could do multiplication, division, squares, square roots, cubes, cube roots, base 10 logarithms, sines, cosines, tangents, and cotangents. With the modern age of calculators, some of you may be wondering what good slide rules are for. Well, it's a great way to get some mean cubicle cred with your fellow geeks. Now I'm going to show you some of the basics of slide rules, but if you want some more sophisticated and detailed explanations, you can find a great tutorial right here. The slide rule contains a number of scales which are useful for performing calculations. There's the C and D scales which are used for multiplication and division, and also as general purpose scales. The A scale for squares and square roots, the K scale for cubes and cube roots, and then on the back side of the slide rule, you have the L scale for base 10 logarithms, and the S and T scales for sines, cosines, and tangents. To perform multiplication, we're going to line our number up on the C scale, that's this scale right here, with our chosen multiple on the D scale. So let's say we want to multiply by 2. Just line those up. And now we want to see what 2 times 4 is. So 1 times 2 gives us the result of 2 on the D scale. Let's go over to 2, and we get the result of 4. The process can also be reversed to perform division. So for example, say you wanted to divide 4 by 2, you would line up 4 on the D scale and 2 on the C scale, and that would be equivalent, if you followed it back to 1, to 2 divided by 1. In other words, 4 divided by 2 equals 2. The slide rule also provides a method for doing squares and square roots. For example, if you find a square of a number, you simply find the number you wish to square on the D scale, and the square of the number is shown on the A square. For example, 2 squared is 4, so you align 2 on the D scale, and you get 4 on the A scale. You can reverse this process for square roots. Find the number that you want to take the square root of on the A scale. So for example, 9. And you find the square root right up there on the D scale. Which in this case is 3. You can even flip the sliding part of the slide rule scale over, which reveals a couple additional useful scales. You have the L T and S scales, which can be used to find base 10 logarithms, tangents and cotangents, and sine functions. The else or logarithmic scale provides you with the mantissa or decimal part of a log base 10 of a number. So from that, the characteristic or whole number portion of the logarithm has to be determined by the user. For example, using this scale, the mantissa of 2 is 
1 minus 0.7 is 0.3. So log base 10 of 2 is 0.3. And going on from that, like I said, using common sense, log base 10 of 20 would be 1.3. Log base 10 of 200 would be 10.3, and so on. The SI scale on this slide rule will find you the cosecant of a given angle. So for example, the cosecant of 90 is 1, and as you slide along from 90 down to lower angles, which are the angle is given on the SI scale, you get smaller and smaller numbers. All the way down to zero, well actually it doesn't go all the way down to zero, it goes down to about five. Because for smaller numbers, you go beyond the range of the scale. Once again, one over the cosecant of an angle is the sine of an angle, and you can also remember that the sine or cosine of a given angle is sine of 90 degrees minus that angle. So you can use that to find sines, cosines, and their inverse functions. The tangent function, which on this one ranges from about 5 to 45 degrees, is useful for finding tangents and cotangents. You can slide your hairline along to a given angle, and on the D scale, the tangent of that angle will be provided for you. So the tangent of 45, or rather in this case since it's a TI scale, the cotangent of 45 is 1, and as you slide along down towards 0, you get bigger and bigger angles, so the cotangent gets larger while the tangent gets smaller. Hey George, good news. Calculator's fixed. Works again. Awesome. George, it feels so good to be back. Wait a minute, who the heck is she? Oh, I see how it is. You two timing backstabbing jerk. I will make you pay. Say goodbye to your <laughs> 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 Before we end this week's episode, there are a couple of very important special thank yous that I have to give. First, to Wilson. As you, some of you may have noticed, we have a new logo. So, uh, big thank you to Wilson for making the awesome new logo. And also to Artur, who sent us the first email asking for our assistance. Now, if any of you guys have anything you would like to ask, by all means, email me or Ben at one of these places.